Welcome, everybody. My name is Pat Alexander. I'm with the Charlotte Street Foundation. Welcome to Peer. This is our one year anniversary of hosting uh, this event. And the idea behind it is just inviting three artists in the community who I feel like they should know each other, uh, basically just off of what how they're working, what they're doing, and the big ideas that, you know, this is an amazing grassroots community and there's lots to learn and share with each other, but sometimes it's hard to find each other, especially during a pandemic, so that's why we started this. So tonight we're super excited to have three figurative painters, and that is Janet Duca and Anissi Harries and John Sutton. So each one of them has prepared a quick five minute, only 10 slides, we, we made them just get everything in there in five minutes. So the idea is that we're just gonna learn a little bit more about each one of them, we'll play those with my friend uh, Mary Lawson here helping. And then we will open uh, up for a little conversation between the three artists to let them ask each other some questions. We can kind of listen and hear what they say. So with that, we're gonna start it right off because I don't wanna give intros because that's what the slideshows are about. So take it away, Mary. Hi, I'm Jana Duca. My paintings are of connections and stories. Each painting starts with a story or a memory or a fleeting feeling or connection with people or places. They also start with a concept of the other and the ways they connect with the world around them. I'm used to being the other or the only in the room. I'm rarely what other people assume I am when they first see me. This painting is my aunt Desiree who lives in Guyana. The patterns of her story and background are bright and weave themselves into her figure. She is so connected to her culture, history, and family that she is just as vibrant and influenced on the world around her as it is on her. I see the patterns in my paintings almost like the tradition of the quilt and storytelling. The Memory Keeper, Acrylic on Canvas. Growing up, I was a part of my environment. I made connections and put down roots wherever I could, even where they were considered weeds. I tried to become a part of the world around me. I could always see the beauty of what surrounded me, but I couldn't become a part of it unless I molded myself into the background, unseen, unheard, unnoticed, observing and documenting. Forest for the Trees, acrylic and oil on canvas. And both this painting and the last painting started off with layers and layers of fluid acrylics that are fast drying. But on this one, I added more depth by going in with um, oil paints on top. Now, because my parents were rootless too, we moved nearly every year, only staying long enough so that roots wouldn't grow too deeply. By the time I was 16, I had moved 16 times. I went to seven different elementary schools. Um, a lot of my paintings have to do with roots and connections and people. And my first paintings with blurred lines and blurred relationships with the environment were back in 1999. My teacher introduced me to Gerhard Richter and Chuck Close afterwards and encouraged me to explore more ways to use patterns or blending to tell my story. Later, another teacher introduced me to Leslie Dill and to Anne Gale Leslie Dill used words and paper and printing masterfully, and Anne Gale masterfully breaks a figure into color patterns over time. Dandelion, oil on panel. Anne Gale and Leslie Dill are the two artists that have probably had the biggest and longest lasting influence on me but my influences aren't only visual, they're also literary and environmental as well. For the first time when I came to school in Missouri, I saw seasons like winter where there's snow and ice or autumn where trees change colors. And then began to also attend poetry readings where I fell in love with words and was introduced to Margaret Atwood. Both of these are digital paintings, Flo on the left and Ophelia on the right. Now, digital art is a new area I'm exploring, and I'm also diving back into the written word. 
Some of my new project plans include writing stories and creating art that relates to the connections in the stories. I wanna bring words back into my art and I also plan to experiment with fragmented embroidery and words sewn directly into the painting as a way to connect or obscure. My art is about storytelling and connections. I have strange, beautiful, winding, hearty roots that curl and twist trying to find the light and trying to find the place where I can belong, not as the other, but as the understood, just as much a part of your story as you are a part of mine. And with my paintings, I can make connection to others when I'm not present, and I can make connections with my words when my voice fails me. Glance, oil on canvas. In this painting, I painted the background first, then I painted the figure on top with pieces already missing from her. Then I went back and forth, bringing the background color into the figure and blending parts of the figure out into the background. It reminds me of a half forgotten memory, like someone you glanced at while passing on the sidewalk. You may remember a feature or two that stood out, but you aren't really seeing them and the memory of them is fading within seconds. Composure 2, Oil on Canvas. This is similar to Glance, but in a more powerful way though. It's someone who is powerful with a vibrant voice who leaves patterns and marks wherever they can, leaving a piece of themselves with every interaction and putting their hearts into the straight, winding, dotted, narrow, bold, um, or even crooked connections and roots. It's all about the connections and storytelling. Gravity, oil on wood panel. This painting started off like a standard oil self-portrait in front of a mirror, but through layers and reflected backgrounds and foregrounds, I took the colors that were in the mirror and spread them out like a projection in front of me and around me and parts of myself are dripping up into the air and pieces of the reflected background projected around me are starting to orbit the space I occupy. I'm surrounded by pieces of memories and stories, but I'm not overtaken by them. I'm holding my own and these are pieces of me, not taking away pieces of me. These are both oil on canvas, the left is the girl with the blue heart, and the right is you begin. Good or bad, sad or enlightening, beginnings or endings, positive or negative space, writing, drawing, painting, random angles of light or harmonies of tone that just make sense despite the chaos of info around them. Everything, even the other, shapes who we are, how our story sings, and they shape who we will become in the years and stories yet to come. That was gorgeous. Who's next, Pat? Anasia. Okay. Let's see if this works here. Hey everyone, welcome to my Pierce chat. I want to say thank you to Charlotte Street for putting this on today and for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. So let's get started. My name is Onesia, as I said earlier. I am a visual artist, and I make art about guiltless sexual expression. And what that simply means is that I am a figurative, abstract artist that is helping people to become more comfortable with their sexuality and how they express themselves. So a bit about my background and how I kind of got into this. After experiencing sexual abuse at a very young age, I spent a lot of my youth unpacking shame and guilt and trying to understand what happened and how to navigate that. And a lot of me processing that trauma started with poetry and then writing stories, and I eventually evolved into art, and art is where I kind of camped out after that. So at the University of Arkansas, I am going to tie this back in later, so just bear with me. But at the University of Arkansas, I studied communications and 
my favorite courses were about the rhetoric of gender, sexuality, race, and class. And this really built the foundation for the lens in which I understood my identity and in turn my art, right? So I started creating art about myself. And when I was, I wasn't sharing my art with anybody in the beginning. Like I was 23, four years old. I was making all this art and I wasn't sharing it with anyone. And my friends would come over and they would see the art and we would have these conversations about why I started making this work. And I learned during those conversations that I wasn't alone in my shame, my guilt, and that people around me uh, felt the same way or were struggling with the same things. It was in those moments that I learned that my art was actually a tool for helping people to navigate those things and to feel confident again and to feel powerful again. And that's what drives me now. So a bit about my practice. My practice usually involves a reference photo that is a selfie of some sort. And I love these because it puts the subject in control of the lens. This is a bit different because with nude figurative art, it's usually done by men. And it's usually involving them sexualizing and objectifying their subject. And with my art, the subject becomes in control of the lens with their selfie or their reference photo or whatever it is. And they control how I get to paint them. And it makes for a much more compelling process because I become the medium at that point. I'm not in control. I just kind of let the work speak for itself. And the subject gets to control the storytelling, not me. I'm just the medium through which the story is told. I really began to dig into my art by painting myself first. It's how I learned to develop my process. It's how I connect with others through my work because there's a level and element of vulnerability that's happening in those moments. And it helped me to really evolve the storytelling um, into something more collaborative with other people as I grew as an artist. And uh, it's a foundation in my process now. And it's how I got connected with the Small Tree Art Gallery in Kansas City, Missouri. So I was lucky enough to receive representation with Small Tree because it gave me the chance to really focus on developing my art career seriously for the first time in my life. I eventually created the Send Nudes Project, which is a commissioned art series that allows people to hire me and to basically paint them expressing themselves sexually. That process involves them sending me a nude photo. And during that process, there's a lot of conversations happening around that photo. And what happens is I get to paint them through their lens and then they get to hang it in their homes later and they get to celebrate themselves every day. And I've had a lot of people come back to me say, I love this painting because it reminds me that I'm powerful and I'm confident. And that's why I do the work that I do. I am currently focusing all of my energy on preparing for the other art fair, which is taking place in Los Angeles. I think they have like 10 locations happening around the world. And I'm really excited because this is like the window of opportunity I've been waiting for to kind of catapult my art career in a very meaningful direction. So uh, I'm basically just planning logistics day in and day out for the next two months. To learn more about me, please check my check out my website. It's onisia.com. That's O-N-N-I-S-S-I-A. You can also follow me on Instagram where I'm usually pretty active and it's just my name at Onisia. And uh, lastly, I believe in networking. I believe in the power of opening doors for others. So um, if you ever have any questions or any concerns about anything or you just want some quick advice, uh, email me at Onisia, the artist at gmail.com. I don't always know the answer, but I'd be happy to help you find it. <laughs> All right, take it easy. Thanks. And thank you. We have John Sutton. This is our third remarkable artist. Here we go. Welcome, everyone. My name is John Sutton, and I've been an artist literally my whole life. According to my mother, I was drawn in the womb. I'm now a professional artist living currently in Kansas City and a former resident artist of the Art Thinking Theater of Kansas City. I initially started my art training at the University of Central Missouri, but transferred and graduated magna cum laude from Park University with a degree, a bachelor's degree in fine art, with an emphasis in painting and ceramic sculpture. I started out my artistic career as an illustrator, a comic book illustrator to be more specific. Many feel that that was my strongest work. Over the years, I've been developing a unique painting style and I've really fallen in love with sculpture. I've really developed a fondness for metal sculpture and welding in general. This is something I plan to continue and it's furthered my passion for art. I have a wide range of interest when it comes to sculpture. I work in clay, iron, resin, rock, glass, and wood. I look forward to further enhancing my knowledge of welding and creating various metal sculptures. 
I'd like to expand on my figure-based subject matter in painting and create various sculptural, sculptural figurative works. I've been described as a versatile and a socially conscious artist who prides himself on crossing art disciplines from painting to sculpture to illustration. I emerged from the Kansas City Art District, a nomadic political and social activist who uses art to express my thoughts, promote tolerance and understanding, compassion, and to increase empathy. I like to attend various community events, and I've participated in numerous presentations in schools, middle schools, high schools around the greater Kansas City metro area. Tonight, I've selected approximately 10 examples of my work, which will be offering insight to my influences and what inspires me, inspires me daily and keeps me constantly motivated to create. I will also offer a look into my studio practice and the various mediums that I use. I refer to myself as a multidisciplinary artist because I use a vast range of supplies and mediums. I choose these mediums based on which discipline I best think would illustrate visually what my intended message was. If I have an idea that would best be explained by a painting, then that's exactly what I will use. Perhaps my message would be best shown in the form of a sculpture. Ultimately, I'll even write a poem or a short story if that's the tool that will you know, best give my thoughts and ideas life. Ultimately, for the past decade or so, most people would identify me as a painter, and they're not wrong. With regards to my paintings or any artistic discipline I may choose, I want my audience to either fall in love with my work or even take issue with it. I think that my art may be an acquired taste, but I believe art that is difficult or uncomfortable to view or even talk about is more the culprit there. I go for emotion and a sense of rawness in my work, as you will be able to tell. My most recent works deal with several political issues, as well as social commentary, and how I'd like to personally explain those issues. Art speaks truth. You know, you, you draw what you see, you paint what you see, and so on. In and of itself, that perceptive visualization intent should be truth. However, creators of all types have always and will always see things in a perspective that only myself and other artists will identify with and understand. I believe that the African Americans' advantages and opportunities are greater now at this moment than they ever really have been before. At any time really in our nation's history, and Kansas City may have just become the centralized hub more than any other place in the country. And I do believe that due to the strong presence of African-American artists here, Kansas City is poised to become the artistic, intellectual, and cultural center for all African-Americans of the United States, and will finally exert a real vital influence upon all people. Eventually, I'd like to see a neo-Harlem renaissance emerging across America with cross-disciplinary artistic and cultural activity among African-Americans in every state. Artists involved with the movement reasserting a renewed pride in Black life and identity and an even higher consciousness of inequality and discrimination and an interest in a rapidly changing modern world. And I feel in many ways, Black artists have the feeling that, you know, they're experiencing a renewed freedom of expression right now. Um, and maybe through art for the first time. We seriously need a new and revised version of the federal project, federal art project, which was an employment program for artists initiated by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt in the Works Progress Administration of the WPA. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in the discussion. Wow, thank you all so much. Congrats. That it's really some powerful work there that I just witnessed in like 15 minutes, which I love about this. Um, so now that I just want to kind of let you all kind of talk about and kind of what you heard from this and see, you know, mainly for the artists, I'd love for you all to be able to ask each other a question and just what you learned or want to connect with. Um, I'll, I'll kick it off, though, uh, just to get it going. Um, and Jana, with you, I was curious, uh, everyone's using... Uh, as different uh, models for their figures and, you know, love what Onisia is doing. I was curious about how you find your models in that subject. Is that, do you seek them out first or are they your muse or just, I would love to hear a little bit more about that. Well, my high school art teacher always told me that 
you have no excuse not to make art because you always have yourself. So when I can't find models, I model myself with different lights and shades, but then I try to change it to make it into someone else. Um, sometimes I will do self portraits. Sometimes I'll use um, my, my son or uh, my daughter, but, but I still remember my high school art teacher saying, you have no excuse if you can't find a model because right. uh, it can be hard finding a model willing to sit several hours for you and go through the process of the different layers. Mm -hmm. um, it's great. Um, sometimes I solicit photographs too. Yeah, well, I, I thought the glance, I really think that is just amazing. I like right there was thinking, like your art teacher said, it's like, you, who doesn't have that glance all the time? But it seems like a really great exercise just to do in general for like quick sketching and stuff like that too. So I learned a lot from that. So thank you on that part as a, as a painter myself. Yeah. Uh, did you have any questions you want to ask any of the other artists or not to put you on the spot, but you're already there. Um, I guess for Anicia, um, is there any, any significance in your color choices or, um, or the patterns that you use in your work? Um, it really depends on the piece. Uh, for a while, I really was focused on like being intentional with each color that I chose because I feel that like I believe in the psychology of color and I think that when you look at a painting you're supposed to feel a certain way you know so if I if you look at blue like psychologically it makes you feel more calm but sometimes it might even make you feel a little sad mm -hmm. whereas red is like really aggressive and bright um it's also like a color of passion um and for a while I leaned heavily into the color pink because it was the color of healing and a lot of the work they do is healing work. Um, and so it, it did in the beginning, but like as I evolve as an artif artist, I'm like branching out more and more with my color palette. Um, so yeah, that's like, it's evolving. I remember seeing your work in the, that pink and that's what drew me to it a few years ago. And uh, I love the direction you're going with this. It's it's fantastic. And it just has a lot of meaning. Um, what made you start like, doing the commission works or that partner collaboration I guess it's kind of a collaboration yeah yeah. Uh, yeah um it was kind of a weird point in my life because like I had just finished my solo show and like that was like right when the pandemic had hit and um I was kind of taking classes about like business as an artist and like trying to be like this like art entrepreneur which I I understand but I was still like not really sold on the culture of that yet just yet um but anyway I was uh I was trying to be creative creative and like figure out like how can I like sustain my lifestyle because like I was out of work at this point in time and uh, I was like I need to make a living and I was like why don't you share what you do with other people you know and have them connect with your work in a different way and it's the same process it's just that we're it's more focused on an individual now um and that's kind of how I got started and it was going really really well for a while um but commission work is also like very exhaustive um, I was thankful, but I was also like very tired. I would do like 15 easily. Um, yeah, it's, it's intense. I, I can imagine being like, if, you know, people who do commercial art and having art directors and clients and all that. So, you know, by you uh, sharing your studio with them, that's pretty um, generous, I would say too, in that way. Um, did you have any questions you want to ask? Some of the other um, no, but I did have comments that I, I wanted to share. Um, I like was writing, I was taking notes as we were talking. Um, I just wanted to share that, uh, Jana, you made a comment earlier about like how um, making connections with others in your work um, and connecting, using your artwork to be understood. Uh, I thought that was like, the way you described that was like so ethereal. I was like, that's brilliant. Um, I just absolutely love the way that you made that connection. Um, and then I wrote down, I, I saw a piece, I don't know if this is your own quote, John, but I noticed it and it really stuck with me. And you wrote down uh, in one of your works that love is the root of all good. Um, and that like, I never thought of that before, but it really resonated with me, so. Thank you. That's very cool. 
Uh, we'll go. We'll put the pressure on John now. <laughs> <laughs> John, thank you so much. It was great. Um, thank you. Yeah, and you being a multidisciplinary artist, you know, I know you've dabbled in lots of different things as you shared mm -hmm. things like that. Um, with you, I know you particularly work a lot with yourself for the portraits when you were working with some of your story and, and working mm -hmm. that out. I was curious if you could share a little bit more about that or uh, how sure. you're approaching the subjects. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, in a similar situation um, as far as when I'm really concentrating on doing my figurative work, um, I, I use what I have and I'm always available. <laughs> um, but doing so much uh, portraiture work with myself and using myself as the, the main, uh, main focus, um, it's really, for me, it's a lot of uh, just looking inward at myself, a lot of introspection um, just for myself, um, really delving and diving into just my own psyche, um, because I, I have a lot of, I don't know, just unsolved, um, I don't wanna necessarily say trauma, um, but just issues throughout my life. Um, as long as I can remember, um, I've suffered from anxiety and depression, um, major depressive disorder, uh, to the point of being very debilitating. Um, and, you know, for the last, I don't know, since probably since high school, this really, when it really kind of manifested itself. But even as a, a child, I always felt, you know, not happy, not sad, just kind of even Steven, you know, a certain numbness, but I was fine. Um, but I didn't have any childhood trauma or anything like that. I mean, my childhood was fantastic. Um, so I, I don't know, like by looking at myself, I'm really trying to, I don't know, inspect or dissect what kind of hidden issues I may have had that maybe I've blocked or I'm just not addressing. Um, so mental illness, it's a big topic for me um, with some of my figurative work. Um, homelessness, because there were times when if it weren't for my family, um, hey, you know what? I, I could have been that guy outside Barnes and Noble that people step over, you know, going inside to get a book. I mean, and that's just real, you know? Um, and so I try to just tap into that. And that's where that very last um, painting uh, that I had, um, just delving into that, you know? I mean, there was a time when I would just have a canvas, I'd go out and I'd just paint what I saw, you know? I'd, I'd offer money, food. I'd say, hey guys, just stay where you're at. <laughs> I just want to, I just want to paint it. I, I mean, no harm. You know what I mean? Um, sometimes I was successful. Sometimes they wanted nothing to do with it. Sure. <laughs> the, yeah. That's the no right. Themselves out there, yeah. so. These critics, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're tough. They're the real yeah. tough ones. Uh, just from seeing some of the other works, uh, could you relate or have some questions or, you know, anything you'd like to share or comments? Yeah. I mean, just the exploration of, of self. Um, I, I mean, I totally just relate to that, you know, addressing, uh, you know, uh, trauma, um, you know, all that. I mean, that's just, that's what a lot of my work is about. You know, um, I do give myself um, a break from that uh, temporary reprieve. Um, but from the other, artists that were here tonight, I really want to look into tightening up my color palette um, because I'm really kind of all over the map sometimes uh, with my work. And I really was impressed by the use of color and why a certain color was used. Um, for me, it's just kind of a organic thing. Um, as I'm painting, it's just it just kind of comes to me. Like I'm not really putting a lot of thought into it. And I'd like to get to that point where I'm actually breaking down uh, my color theory um, and my color palette. And so that's something that I, I took away tonight from the other two artists, yeah. Taking that a little more um, cerebral, putting that thought process into it, not just relying on, you know, 24 hours straight of pain of just raw emotion, you know what I mean? Which there's nothing wrong with that either, but you know, yeah. <laughs> Because a couple of those paintings that I did, um, uh, especially just one of those days, I mean, that was a deal after I suffered one of the worst breakups of my life. And uh, I mean, it was a deal that sent me into anxiety, panic attacks, everything. I could barely hold a brush. I, you know, my hands were cramping. And uh, yeah, I painted that in the, in the span of, I don't know, about eight hours overnight. And it was a healing, day. you know, it was a healing process. 
And I so, think the motion came out in it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And, and thanks for just putting yourself out there, you know, yeah. everybody um, and just being so genuine and honest. Um, and that's, and, and that's, that's like, taken easy me, to it's hide me, behind your painting sometimes. And right. So, it's it's okay. taken me a while to get to that point, but I, I just decided one day, you know, I was just going to own it, you know, and if my honesty can help somebody else relate or seek help, then, hey, that's cool. that's what it's about, you know. Yeah, Jana, I was uh, just falling off on the color palettes because I was definitely intrigued by the way that you use your brush and the paints and kind of almost like these glitches of like of those memory kind of things, how I kind of mm -hmm. associate that. But maybe did you have any, uh, you know, thing you'd offer to John about how you approach color or any of that kind of stuff or just books or other artists that you said, you know, you mentioned some artists too. Well, I mean, sometimes the way you use color, the first go through might just be just what you're feeling in the moment. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess when I was looking at John's work, I don't know, maybe it's just because of the, the subject matter or maybe the sometimes including 3D elements in it. But I was thinking about um, another artist, um, Harold Smith, hmm. and, um, and some of the color choices he uses. Um, and maybe, I don't know, maybe, even though he's not on this call, maybe asking him <laughs> more about why he uses certain colors for certain things. Because I remember being in a discussion with him and he was explaining, um, like he had this one painting that was all black and mm -hmm. yeah. there were um, like objects stuck to the canvas and like there were specific reasons that he used for the color. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I'll have to, one thing I'll say is that they could be reasons that, you know, are traditional, like this color means this or this color means that but you could also have color choices that are personal to you, like maybe a certain color reminds you of a certain memory or smell or something happening. Sure. And so whenever you want to evoke that, even if it's only for you, um, do that color or maybe, um, or maybe if you obscure something in a specific way or use a specific type of contrast, just mm -hmm make it something that it is like it has meaning to you but you consistently use it even if it's kind of like a like a secret code to yourself sure that's great yeah it's funny that you mentioned harold smith because um over the last probably i don't know seven eight years or so um we've gotten to be pretty close with one another um just as as peers and then just as people um and i had a midlife career change um, this was my first semester uh, teaching high school art. And originally, um, I was going to, uh, Harold retired from Lincoln Middle School, uh, the prep school, and he had asked me to take his uh, position. Um, but the school that I'm at now, once I told them, hey, this were my plans, they gave me a counter offer. Uh, <laughs> and to stay. And um, yeah, it, it, it just turned out to be a, a I don't know, a much better situation for me. Um, but yeah, um, I'm very familiar with Harold's work and I'm actually hoping to get with him so he can, um, I can get a, a tape of him, a video recording um, of him explaining why he chooses the colors that he does. Because I told my students, I showed a picture because there's a poster of him in our, in our building. And I said, you know, you look at this and it's abstracted work, but rest assured, Mr. Smith pit every color, every stroke, is there for a precise reason, you know, because we were going over abstract work. Um, and hey, is, is this art or not? That age old question, you know, well, anybody can do that. And it, it, it sparked some really good um, conversation. And uh, yeah, I'd like Carol to maybe even come in and give a presentation. I think it will be great. But he, yeah, great guy. Yeah, uh, back in 2007, he was the first person who ever saw at a show of my work and actually sought me out where I was and told That's me awesome. that he loved my work. That's awesome. That's he's a, yeah. he's a guru. Yeah. He's, he's a, a kind of a behind the scenes uh, guru for a lot of artists here. I'm um, just really uh, 
a lot of programs and things just constantly reaching out not not selfish at all just truly wants to see everybody do well you know and you see i see that with you as well um in a much younger way but it, it's great and you see i was I remember when i first came across you actually i think i kind of saw you because i heard your poetry actually uh, that we had hosted a slam mm -hmm. and uh and i was really taken by that and so then i was really excited to find out i was like oh and a painter but i love how all of you are using language and and you know as healing and as um as a way to create so um i just i guess I had a comment about that more than anything um <laughs> You know, we keep this really short and I know, you know, we kind of had some issues. So we ran a little over tonight. Mm -hmm. I could sit here and talk to all of you over and over because it's just some really great things happening. But I do encourage everyone, uh, one, to find their sites. We will be posting this video. We'll clean it up and edit it and it'll be on our YouTube channel. So uh, it'll exist there. So you can always come and find everybody, hopefully in that way. But um, just wish you all, all the success and keep doing what you're doing. It's it's important um and i just love seeing it all out there it's a figurative artwork in the contemporary world's been kind of quiet and shadowed for any time i see that there's kind of a comeback with identity with these stories and um so good for you all for keeping to that i guess um, with that I, I guess we're gonna end it here um but thank each of you so much for sharing and um mary thank you for all of your help as well tonight all right, guys, we'll see you in the galleries. Come by. Thank you.